friends, it's Callie again. Thanks for joining me today. We are playing with some 3D embossing folders. Have you seen the latest 3D embossing folders by Simon Says Stamp? This was released during the Holly Jolly release, and this is the Peony bundle. So they are 3D embossing folders and are so much fun. And I decided I would do something different and watercolor with them. I don't think that that's been done before, but I might be wrong. Jennifer McGuire has a wonderful video with lots of fun techniques using 3D embossing folders. So be sure to check out her video. So as I said, I'm gonna be watercoloring today. So my cardstock in here is gonna be watercolor. And as you can see, I have never done a sandwich before with this uh, 3D embossing folder. So I just put it in a Spellbinders Platinum with the base only and then an embossing mat. I wasn't sure if there were any cutting plates that I needed to put in, but that's what worked for me. And I spared you the whole mess of me shifting and messing with my Altenew mat there. So I went ahead and rolled it through my die cutting machine um, off camera and now we have this beautiful embossed image and a lot of people have said in the past that they'd like to see the actions of cleaning your brush putting your brush in the paint so that's what I'm doing right now I wanted to put everything on camera so that you can see my process now I am not a watercolor expert this is just how I watercolor and I tend to be a control freak. So I like to have lots of control when I watercolor, which hardly seems like it would make sense for a watercolor to be controlling, right? Because it's a pretty loose, loose environment, hence watercolor. So anyway, this is my technique and I hope that you find it helpful. If not, I apologize in advance. I'm gonna start off by saying that running watercolor paper through the embossing folder does change its texture and the way it absorbs water. So it is a tad different to work with from what I noticed because I love Arches Cold Press Watercolor, which is what I'm using today. And I noticed that the water doesn't absorb quite as quickly and wants to spread a little bit faster. So what I do is with a damp brush, I do not wet the surface first. I grab some color and I apply that color directly to the nooks and crannies of each petal. And then I don't rinse off that water, but I do get some more water to kind of dilute what's on the brush in order to spread out that pigment. And then once it's spread out, I clean my brush and then I go back in and kind of swipe over those areas and remove any excess color that I don't want there to create a lighter image. So again here, this is the second petal that I'll show you and then I'm gonna speed through all of it. I'm applying the pigment as it is now, picked up from that watercolor pan with a clean brush. So I've cleaned my brush and I've picked up paint, added it to my petal, and then I've gone back into the water, added some extra water to the pigment that's on my brush. And then I've used my chamois or my absorber there to kind of pick up any excess water because I don't want it to be too runny because if it's too runny, then I can't control it, which is a problem for me, right? So I am taking off the excess water on my chamois and then going back to my petal and continuing to smooth out that pigment and picking up any that I don't want. So it's a process and you kind of have to go back and forth to get the look that you want, but it's going to be the same throughout. And I will be doing that on each and every petal as you can see. I know this is a sped up process here that you're seeing, but it's all the same. And I hope that that kind of helped you a little bit with my process and trying to make sense of how I get the gradient on each petal the way I do. I know a lot of people paint differently, so that's um, completely up to you and what you're comfortable with. This is how I've always done it, so I kind of feel like it's my way of doing it, but I, I know that it's not how everybody does it because I've watched other people color before too. Okay, now we're on the center of these peony centers. I am using a crinacridone gold, I believe. So it's a, a gold dark yellow color and I'm just adding that color and again wiping away and then adding dabs of color because I kind of want it textured even though it's already textured. I also think that the, because the image is raised with these mountains and valleys from the texture that it kind of naturally draws the water and pigment into the lower parts of the crevices so it kind of is a cheat. It helps draw the colors into those nooks and crannies for you, kind of helping you in a way. So that's that's kind of interesting with uh, painting on these textured embossed images. 
So now that we're done with this panel and it dries pretty fast, I can go ahead and trim it down so that I can mat my card base later on. And then before I mount it to a card base, I wanted to add some splatters to create more texture. So I'm watering down a fine tech gold pan here and then I'm gonna splatter it with my splattering brush. I just use a cheap brush for that. And then after that, I decided I wanted some white also. So I have some acrylic paint in a little jar that I normally draw paint out of for my white splatters. I use it often enough that having it in a jar is super handy and helpful. All right, so for this sentiment, we have the thinking of you sentiment strips, and I've decided on this one here that says, I miss you all the time. I miss my friends, I miss hugs, I'm sure that you all do too, so I felt like that was the sentiment that was calling to me. I've added a piece of foam tape to the right side only because I wanted to match the raised edges of the leaves and flowers where I'm gonna adhere it. But before I adhere it down, I wanted to add some black all the way around the cut edges to hide that white core. Now I'm using Gina K Connect glue and that adhesive is just gonna draw down and pull the sentiment strip towards that cardstock that's raised up. So I felt that that was the best way to go so that you don't have these ridges in your sentiment strip. Okay, at this point, I felt like I could go ahead and attach my panel to my card base. I'm using a sheet of craft foam. I felt that that was a little bit safer to go with all the texture on the embossed image. So I'm adding a piece of craft foam that I had initially prepared and run through my Xyron Creative Maker or Sticker Maker. It just adds adhesive to one side. And then I use score tape to adhere it to my card base. Last but not least, I've laid out some of my favorite sequins, these iridescent Trinity Stamp Soapy Bubbles. I've laid them out and once I knew where I wanted them, I went ahead and attached them to my card. And that finishes my card for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for stopping by and have a wonderful day. Bye everyone.